Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a planetary atmosphere in Maxon Cinema 4D. This effect is often the missing piece of making a space scene look real. There are a lot of ways to do it, and I'll share with you what I think is the simplest way using Cinema 4D's standard physical render. Nothing special like Redshift or Octane are needed. I want to thank Zurich-based director and animator Neil Stubbings, who helped me understand some of the specifics in Cinema 4D. I'd gotten part of the way through using techniques I've used in many other 3D applications, but I didn't know about a cool and necessary feature in Cinema 4D called Loomis, which we'll cover in just a little bit. Okay, so here I am in Cinema 4D, and I've got a planet and a background of stars, which are just essentially, this planet is a sphere with some textures on it, and the background of stars is a, is a uh, sky with texture on it, so nothing special going on there, and I'm not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on building the atmosphere. So to do that, let's get started with a few things. We're going to be making changes that we're going to need to see updated, because when we look at it as a material over here, or in the material editor, it's not really going to tell us what we need to know, so we need to see this updating regularly. Best way to do that is to choose the interactive render region, and that will create a render area that is updated as we make changes. So as I rotate around it, you can see that gets rendered. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to duplicate my sphere. So the planet that's right here, I'm just going to control C, control V, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to rename this atmosphere, and then I'm going to just make it slightly larger than the sphere that is the planet. So let's, so it's a radius of 182, let's make it 183, and that should do it. We're just trying to make an atmosphere that just is right slightly bigger than the planet. The next thing we want to do is add a light because we're going to create a material that is light reactive. And so let's add in a simple light and just move that over here like so. And then we're going to create a new material. And for this material, let me just double click and get into the material editor. We're going to turn off the color and we're going to turn off reflectance. We are going to turn on luminance, right? And let's apply this to our sphere here. So I'll drag this over right here onto the atmosphere and let me delete the other material that's underneath it, not needed. Okay, so let's come back and look here. So we've got this luminance thing because we want our atmosphere to glow a little bit, but we need to create an alpha channel that is just showing on the edge of where the planet is lit up. So the way to do that is to use something called the Lumus shader. So let's go into the alpha option here. Let's turn on the alpha. And when we're in here, for texture, come down here and choose Effects, and then Lumos. Now, you can see here, when we're looking in the Material Editor, you can see how where light is hitting it, we can see it. So basically, it's as if whenever, it's like a shield almost. You know, if you're trying to do some kind of cool special effect with, with a shield, like wherever the thing is hitting, where the beams of light are hitting it, we see it. So in this case, we're seeing it over here, we're not seeing it over here, but we're, and there's also this thing on the edge, which we'll take care of in a little bit. But the problem is, is this, we want to have the atmosphere be more like a halo. We want it to be, uh, just sort of have like more thickness over here on the edges and then invisible as we get towards the center. Now, before we go any further, just to explain what the Loomis effect or Loomis shader is, let's take a look in the manual here for Maxon Cinema 4D where they explain it. And I could have kind of repeated what was here, but essentially the visuals really tell the story. It's a shader that includes different kinds of specular highlights that along with different kinds of bump maps and different sorts of things, you can create really cool patterns of elongated light. Now, in our case, it's really helpful because this only sort of shows up where light hits it. So where light's not hitting it, we don't see it. So we're using this to generate the alpha channel. So I'll move this back over here and let's do a couple of things here. Going into our alpha, so we have Loomis turned on here. Um, I'm gonna jump in there. I'm gonna also shut off all the specular stuff. We don't need it. It's not necessary. Let's get rid of it. Okay, then we wanna create that halo effect. So to do that, let's just jump back up to where it says Loomis right here. And for texture, let's instead of just kind of leaving it as it is, let's go down there and we're going to add a layer. And we'll click into the layer and we're going to choose another shader. And that shader is going to be a Fresnel. Now, really important, jumping back up, this is a step that gets missed, is turn off image alpha. Okay, so now we can see that we've got this halo around here. And this is really cool, but the problem is, is that where the planet is lit, is right here is where we want to see this halo, but we don't want to see it back here where the planet is not lit. So we have to combine these in, in a proper way to make it so that the halo and the Loomis are working together. 
So jumping back into there, into our layer to look at the Fresnel and the Loomis, let's change the Fresnel setting from normal to multiply. And boom, now we've got this halo right here. And we'll go over to the luminance and we're gonna set the color to a blue. And as I rotate around, you can see that we've got this atmosphere wherever light is hitting it and we don't see it where light is not hitting it. Uh, but we still do have, as we talked about before, we still do have this edge right here, this halo that's on the on the dark side. And why is that happening? Is because this light right here is casting light into this onto this sphere that's using this Lumos effect, and we're seeing the inside of it. We're seeing the inside of the sphere lit up in the back. And there's a couple of ways that we could get rid of this. One thing we could do is we could turn on shadows for this light, right? So if we were going to shadows here we could set shadows to ray traced hard that will get rid of it but i don't like that solution because it creates uh it creates shadows that we might not want i mean you can try shadow mapping but i find that sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't get me where i want to get to so i would say let's stay away from shadows although now you know that you can do that and there's two other things that i can think of the first is by adding a compositing tag to the atmosphere so let's hop in there select the atmosphere go to tags go to render tags and then turn on compositing. And once you're in there, you can turn off cast shadows and just so that when light hits it, we don't get shadows. Um, and then also we can turn off scene by transparency. And that's really the, the, the big one right there. Scene by transparency turns it off. And so what's happening is that the sphere, the inside of it is no longer seen because this transparent outer part of it is blocking the inner part of it. So whenever this is turned on, the scene by transparency is turned on, whatever's inside will not be seen because we have scene by transparency turned off. An example of how turning off scene by transparency could be useful is here's a situation with like a car and I've got this transparent material and it's, it's also like it's built up to the point where you can't really tell what you're seeing but if I turn off scene by transparency a lot of the detail comes back because those objects that were being seen are no longer being seen okay so this is one way I'm gonna undo that get rid of that tag let's actually just delete that now another way that you could do this is we can go back into our material and we can go into the luminance and instead of just using a color we can use a Fresnel as well and it's not the Fresnel, it's just a little trick that's with inside the Fresnel. We can, let's set the color first just to make it so that we can see what we're doing here. Uh, let's set this to that same blue. Okay, and what we'll do is we're going to choose for render, we can choose front only. And again, that will render just the front. There we go, that solves the problem. Now, another thing that we can do to just help this look a little nicer, right, is let's get really close, because this is where we'll start seeing some of the things. If you look really close, you can see that there's a very hard line on this atmosphere. We could try scaling the sphere down to just be like one tiny little bit bigger than the actual planet. But another thing we can do is we can jump back into our alpha channel here, go back into the Fresnel, and we can just add in some black right here. So let's just set this to black. And this creates a little bit of halo. Now you're not seeing it yet, but let's give ourselves just a little more room to play with here. Give it a moment to render. And bring this over to here. And this creates, as you can see, a fuzzy edge, right? So if we pull back out, that's looking pretty good. Now, we may want to tighten this up a little bit so that we're really only going to see it at the very edge. You could do that too. So that's just ways of, of working with that. Now, if we jump back into the luminance here where we have the colors, right now I have it set to blue going to black, but we could change this to a color, right? So we could set this to something like just another blue right here like this. And I'll just bring up the brightness of that. Okay, so maybe you want to fade it off into a different color. So we could even try something a little different than that. Maybe more into blue, maybe even to purple. And you can see we create an atmosphere that's blue on the edge, but sort of fades into another color as we go further. And I've seen a lot of Earth pictures where you kind of see something like this, where it's just a slightly different shade. It's a different blue, different kind of shade. So you can use that as well. I'm going to undo that though, and just keep it as blue. And again, come back to my alpha channel here and tighten it up a little bit. And that looks pretty good. 
So there you go. Okay, so one last thing to taste, and that is if you want to add a glow on the edge here. So I'll turn this on. You can see there's a slight difference there. And, you know, we can bring out the radius a bit, and we can we can raise the inner strength if you want to add glow there. I don't think we need to. I think we can keep that as at 50. I think we can even just get the outer strength to 100. It's just to give it a little extra something. It's just barely there. Maybe you can do that a little more, raise it up a little more. And if you want it, you got it. If you don't want it, you don't got it. You can see it. It's more, it's just very subtle. Now, at the end of the day, you know, I think it's looking pretty good. And you don't have to use any one of those transparency techniques on their own. You can actually combine them all together. You can set it up so that there are shadows and that you are using a compositing tag while also using the Fresnel stuff just to give yourself as much flexibility as you want. The bottom line is you got to just kind of play with this and make it look the way you want it to look. But I hope that this helps you in your work. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz. I'll see you soon.